get our, let's get our, whoops, where is it? Where is it? Did you hear, you didn't hear Genesis, right? No, I did. We're, we're one through seven. You heard one through seven. Did you hear about Noah? Uh, we went, but we went through the seven days of creation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And how the evening and the morning are a day, right? Okay, and how science came into it, and God created everything in order, and how he created Adam, and how he created Eve. So after that, they had two sons, Cain and Abel. What happened? It was either Cain or Abel killed the other one. Cain. Because Cain had his own way of doing things. Instead of doing it God's way, he wanted to do it his way. So sin crouches. If you make your own choices, you know, it's the way that seems right to a man, a human being. But the end leads to death, and that's the way Cain chose. Okay, and then they had another son named Seth. And through the line of Seth, <laughs> Methuselah, he's an old guy. Mm -hmm. And Enoch, did he die? Uh, no. He was taken, right? God said, no, I'm taking you. He walked 300 and some odd years, and then God took him. 365, if I remember correctly. And then God took him. He's a human witness. Isn't that interesting? And then we got to Noah. And Noah built an ark, and he had three sons. And they went into the ark. And how long were they? And God called them into the ark, right? Who closed the door of the ark? God. God closed the door of the ark. And then they sat there. For seven days. Ha, Noah! Do you have any light in there? Right? <coughs> right? For seven days. For seven days, he's like, hmm, we don't know. We can only imagine because we're human. <coughs> Would we sit there and doubt? Would we wonder, did I hear you? Maybe I am nuts. It took me a hundred years to make this big monstrosity and all these animals are in here and you closed the door. Well, did you close the door or did the wind close the door? Do you see what happens? Mm -hmm. They we don't, don't know. even know what rain was. Yeah, there was no rain. So what the heck is rain? Mm -hmm. But on the seventh day, it began to pour. God opened the windows of the heaven and the, the <coughs> portals from the earth of rain and the water came up from the deep and the whole earth flooded and rained for 40 days and 40 nights. But the... They were in the boat for the ark for over a year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of where we'll pick up the story, okay? Okay. So, after that, and they open and they have sacrifices because they already knew what was clean and what was unclean. Did we talk about the rainbow being a covenant and a sign? Mm -hmm. Right? But God sees it and says, I'll never flood the whole earth again. Okay, Ham does something. Ham disrespects his father. Ham does something that's so contrary to what God requires of children, even adult children, because he's at least 100 years old. Yeah. But he still disrespects his father. And so because of that, there's a curse on Ham. Interestingly enough, Nimrod comes out of Ham. Nimrod's a fierce warrior, okay? He's a leader. And Nimrod creates a, a kingdom and not necessarily for God. But out of the line of Seth, God chooses one and then another. And then there's a man named Ever. Oh, the world becomes so corrupt that they build a place called Babel. Babel. Babylon. And then at that point, they decide to build a tower, a big tower. And so they start making brick and they make this big tower and they're making it like, wait, I don't know if it's as high as the Empire State Building, but they made it pretty high. And they made it pretty high because they said, well, we're going to make a place so high that we won't get flooded again. We can reach heaven ourselves." And God looked down and said, they learned nothing. And so he, what he did was he confused the languages. So that's why we call it babble. You know, when babies babble and they don't, we don't know what they're saying. She might know what she's saying. 
Of course, we have a good idea what she's saying now, don't we? But when they're little, they babble because it doesn't make sense. It's confused. So God took a single language that everybody could talk, and he made it so that, Alfie, you're going to speak Spanish, <coughs> and you're going to speak German, and you're going to speak French, and I'm going to speak Hebrew, and you're going to speak Italian, and you're going to speak Chinese. And you see what I'm saying? And you're going to speak Swahili and <coughs> I don't have a clue what you're saying, and you don't know what I'm saying, and I don't know what you're saying. And so everybody separates to people that they can talk to, right? And then Eber has a son named Peleg, and his name means division. And at that point, once God divided all the languages, then he divided the earth. And that's when we got the continental drift. That's when all the continents moved. That's when we got Asia and Europe and Africa and Americas, the Native American Indians. All those languages were in groups in different parts of land, and then God separated the land. Okay? So you ever wonder how we got all these different languages and continents? That's how it happened. And it's all in Genesis. Okay? You can read from Genesis 6 to about Genesis 9, 8. And you can read what I'm telling you about, okay? Don't take my word for it. Read it. So Peleg was the time of division when the earth was divided. The languages were divided and the earth was divided. So the peoples were divided and they became different ethnic groups, okay? <laughs> Nationalities, ethnic groups. Are they different? What's another? Race. There's only one race. You know what that is? Human. 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 There's only one race, human, but there's different ethnicities, okay? Okay. Does that bring us where? So that's where everything happened. And once God did all of that, he also divided authority in the heavenly realm. So remember, there's a heavenly kingdom that we don't know a whole lot about. Those beasts, remember? We talked about the crew of Eam and what they looked like, right? So there's a heavenly creatures is about the only way I can describe them because they're not human, right? And then he made humans so that he'd have family on earth and in heaven. And he gave the heavenly people, heavenly beings authority over each division of language and ethnic group and land mass, okay? Okay, so that's how we got to there. And then out of that, he waited a while and he called out one man whose name was Avram. And he lived in that same area where Babylon was and the people were doing their own things and they had their own wealth and they, had, they were starting to serve their own ideas of who God was or what God was, not God Almighty. And he called Abram out from there and he says, I want you to leave your family, leave your home, and go where I tell you to go. And he took him from way over here and had him go up to over here. Basically out of the area of Iraq between the Euphrates and I wish I had my bigger map out. And he took him all the way, what we call the Fertile Crescent, and brought him down into this land called Canaan. That's where we'll stop on that one. Good enough? I'm trying to give you history. Okay, history of of Bible and history of, of kind of a chronological order of what happens with us humans. Because the Bible is written for us, right? Time is for us. So the stories are for us. Good? Okay.